वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल यस थैंक यू वेरी मच वेलकम एवरीबॉडी सो कैन वी मूव ऑन टू लेक्चर 15 गणेश जी देन या नाउ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट डिफरेंट फीलिंग्स इन रिलेशनशिप सो देयर दे आर क्वाइट रिलेटेड आल्सो सो वी कैन मूव ऑन टू लेक्चर 15 टॉक अबाउट रिस्पेक्ट and the right evaluation and then come back to the questions even related to the feeling of trust okay ganesh yeah so we have been talking about you know to begin with about the human aspiration of happiness prosperity and its continuity and then we try to understand that happiness is to be in harmony and therefore our program for ensuring continuity of happiness is to understand the harmony and to live in harmony at all these levels and this understanding can be done through the process of self exploration that we have been you know defining time and again <clears throat> so with that process of self exploration we are trying to understand the harmony at different level we have talked about this harmony in human being in quite detail now we are talking about harmony in family <clears throat> and when we were talking about harmony in family we found that what is most important in the family is that relationship and when we talk about relationship what is most important is the feelings in the relationship <clears throat> right and about this relationship we have made, we had made this four statements number one that relationship is there between one self and the other not that we have to make it we only have to understand it and this relationship is between one self and the other self and the important part in this relationship is the feelings right and these feelings can be recognized they are definite and their evaluation and their fulfillment and evaluation leads to mutual happiness and we were talking about this definite feelings you know feeling of trust feeling of respect and ultimately the feeling of love so we talked about this feeling of trust which is the foundational value <clears throat> which is the you know base which is at the base of acceptance of relationship and now with this we can talk about the second feeling that is feeling of respect so the main issue is understanding relationship when we talk about harmony in family the basic issue is to understand relationship with understanding accept relationship which is already there then we understand the feelings in relationship and ensure this feeling in ourselves once we have this feeling in ourselves it ensures our happiness so it results into happiness in me with this feeling now i share with others as and when i come in contact with the other and this sharing leads to mutual happiness happiness in the other as well so the recognition and fulfillment leads to mutual happiness my happiness was anyway ensured with this right feeling having within me but now when i share it with the other it also leads to the fulfillment of the other so this is what you know, we have we are working on so with this background we talked about the feeling of trust and now we want to move on to this feeling of respect so when you say respect it means right evaluation right i should be able to evaluate myself evaluate the other in a correct manner hmm. right manner now if you look at the details of what does it mean so if you look at it in hindi it says samman is sam plus ma sam is samyak right and ma is evaluating maapna so when i am able to evaluate things as they are when i am able, able to evaluate them rightly this is respect and 
what we have been seeing that when you look at human being now, you know, we have to look at their intention and we have to look at their competence. Okay. So when I'm evaluating a human being, I have to evaluate his intention, which is equivalent to natural acceptance and I have to evaluate his competence. So if we look at our way of evaluating others, right, what are we doing today? Are we doing over evaluation? Under evaluation? Otherwise evaluation? Or we are able to ensure right evaluation? So this is the issue that we have to look at. So when I am evaluating, let's say, my friend or my child, what do I do? Do I make the right evaluation or generally we evaluate for more than what it is? Right? That is over evaluation or we evaluate for less than what it is or we evaluate for other than what it is. So a very simple example which we keep taking in this session. I will not go into the detailed discussion, but I will just briefly draw your attention that if I am happy with the child, right, then I say, oh, he's great. He can do anything. Now this is over evaluation. He's great, he's okay. He can do something, he cannot do something. But when I start saying that he can do anything, this is an over evaluation. But this is quite common. So this is case one. Case two is that for some reason, if I'm unhappy with the child, I say he is useless. He cannot do anything. This is under evaluation. He can do something, he cannot do something, that is fine. Right. But you when you say he cannot do anything, this is an under evaluation. This is an under evaluation. And third is that if I'm very unhappy with him, I say he's a donkey. So I'm not even willing to accept him as a human being. So this is otherwise evaluation. Right. Otherwise evaluation. And if you look at our behavior, we'll find that we end up doing one of these. We are doing one of these. And whenever this evaluation is not right, it is a disrespect. So now you can see, you can check for yourself in every interaction with others, whether it is a respect or disrespect. So now before you utter a word, you have to check that behind these words, what is the feeling? Are you able to evaluate him properly? Or you are over evaluating him? or you are under evaluating him, or you are evaluating him otherwise. So this is something which we have to keep checking with ourselves in every behavior, in every behavior. Right. And this is very significant because this evaluation decides our behavior. And this behavior has a lot of effect on the other. Unless the other has that right understanding in himself, and right feeling which is born out of this right understanding, it is going to influence the other person with whom I am behaving. So if my evaluation goes wrong, my behavior will go wrong. And if my behavior go wrong, it might have a very ill effect on the other. So what we are just mentioning is that if I am doing an over-evaluation, 
or if I'm not doing a right evaluation, what is going to be its impact on me and on the other? So if I'm doing over evaluation, it will lead to ego. So ego is because of this over evaluation. So this is one thing. One implication of this disrespect. On the other hand, if I'm doing under evaluation, then it will lead to depression or it is likely to lead to depression, I would say. Over evaluation leads to ego, under evaluation might lead to depression. And even otherwise evaluation may lead to depression. And if you look at the way we have been behaving and what it has been resulting into the child, for example, is this ego and depression. So when you are over evaluating him, it goes into this ego. When you are under evaluating him or otherwise evaluating him, he goes into depression and your mood keeps fluctuating. Keep fluctuating like the sine, sine wave you know, that we have drawn here. So that dotted line is your self-confidence where you are stable. But you are not stable, you keep fluctuating. So you keep getting into ego and depression. And there is an oscillation between the two. So at one point you think that, oh, I'm great, I can do anything. And then you try doing anything and it fails. And then you get depressed that, oh, no, I cannot do anything. So if I'm fluctuating in this ego and depression, it is because of the wrong evaluation. And when I'm doing wrong evaluation for myself or for the other, it leads to disharmony within. Right. This disharmony within may lead to tension, frustration, depression, suicide, right? all this. So if you look at the way things are today, we have so many cases of, you know, this contradiction between this tension, this frustration, this depression, and so many cases of even suicide. So the basis, basic reason for this is either over evaluation or under evaluation or otherwise evaluation of our own self or of the other. The child gets into tension because you have declared that your child is the best and therefore he gets 100%. Even if he gets 99%, he is in tension. He is frustrated. All that will happen. So that you can see. So find out for yourself whether you are in that dotted line, you know, where you are stable within. You are neither over evaluating nor under evaluating, right? You are able to make right evaluation of yourself. So when we are in that dotted line, so we are neither over evaluating nor under evaluating. We have this self-confidence. Right? And this is the, this is based on our right evaluation. So that is where we need to be. Right? But we are fluctuating. Fluctuating with this red line, you know, if you see. So respect is basically this right evaluation. And with right evaluation, we'll have this self-confidence. Neither ego nor depression. <coughs> yeah. So let us look at this right evaluation now. Yes. 
So when it comes to right evaluation of a human being, the first question to ask is how will you, you know, evaluate a person on the basis of the self or on the basis of the body? So this you can find out, you know. Now that we understand that human being is the coexistence of self and body, and it is the self which is central to human existence. Now we can understand that we have to evaluate a human being on the basis of the self. Right. And when you start evaluating the human being on the basis of the self, this is you know, one of the important conclusions that we can draw. So number one conclusion is that when we look at our purpose, right, I want to live with continuous happiness and prosperity. This I can see for myself. Right. And I can also see that the other also wants to live with continuous happiness and prosperity. So this is what we have been exploring in the first few lectures, that this basic human aspiration is for continuity of happiness and prosperity. And this is same for all of us. So as far as our purpose is concerned, it is same. It is same and we can verify this on the basis of our natural acceptance. That we all have this natural acceptance to be happy and prosperous in continuity. So this is one thing, the purpose is same for all of us. So when you look at the level of self, we can see that purpose is same. When you look at the program for ensuring continuity of happiness, we found out that my program to ensure continuity of happiness is to live in harmony, to understand the harmony and to live in harmony at all levels of our being. And we can also see that the program of every one of us is the same, to live in harmony, to understand the harmony and to live in harmony at all levels of our being. So this we have been able to see, study. So now we can say that our program is also same. So our purpose is same at the level of self, our program is also same. And when we look at the potential, when we look at the potential, we have this similar potential. You know. For example, our desire, thought and expectation is continuous you know, in me. And I am endowed with this natural acceptance which is invariant, innate, definite. And if I look at the other person, he is also, you know, having this desire, thought and expectation going on in him in continuity. And he also has this natural acceptance. So this is our potential. Right? So the richest man and the poorest man has this potential. Right? The smallest child and the oldest man has this potential. The child may have one, one set of imagination. The old man may have another set of imagination. But for both of them, the imagination is going on right. continuously. And both of them have this natural acceptance, which is intact, invariant in them. So in that sense, the potential is also same. So we can at least conclude these three things that our purpose is same, our program is same, and our potential is same. And in that sense, the other human being is similar to me. And this we are saying is the minimum content of respect. So there is something more to it, but this is the minimum content. And it is very important. That are we able to see that the other is similar to me as far as this purpose, program, and potential is concerned. If I can see this and I can accept this, 
this is the spectrum right this is the minimum content of the spectrum if i violate this if i'm not able to understand this and accept this and we violate it then it is a disrespect it is a disrespect so let us ask this question to ourselves and this is a very important point for self reflection whether we are able to accept the other as similar to us or we are trying to differentiate with the other so are we able to see this that the other is similar to me or we are busy trying to differentiate <coughs> so this question i have to keep asking myself in every behavior right that i perform or every thought i perform in relation to other human being right do i accept the other as myself so are we accepting the other as being similar to us or we are trying to show that we are special unique different from the other so this is a very important question to ask because if you look at the society today and the whole education system it is trying to prove that you are special you are unique you are different from the other right without seeing this commonness right without seeing this similarity at the level of self but you find out for yourself yes now if you look at the basis of difference that we are talking about you know all around you will see that the main problem is that we are respecting or disrespecting people on the basis of this differentiation so instead of providing that base of similarity at the level of self and acceptance of that similarity with other human being we start with differentiation we start with differentiation so when we are evaluating somebody we are evaluating him on the basis of age on the basis of gender on the basis of race on the basis of physical strength right all this related to the body so we are evaluating the other on the basis of the status of the body right one such status is the age so for example when you say you respect the elder or you you know, should respect the elder what about youngers so if i ask you what about the youngers in you know, the youngers should we respect them or not then after a lot of you know pause you will say yes we should respect the younger also so we should say that yes we should respect every human being at least in this sense of this similarity which is there in all of us so whether he is at the top of the organization or at the bottom of the organization <laughs> both of them have this <coughs> that we have to behave with them with respect so one basis of our differentiation and therefore this respect is this differentiating on the basis of body that you can keep taking you know that our you know status of the you know evaluating somebody or respecting somebody number one it has to do with the body and it may be one of these four aspects and this is based on the gross misunderstanding that human being is equal to body when i assume that human being is equal to body i am likely to differentiate on the basis of the body while the reality is that human being is coexistence of self and body so i must take care of both when we are evaluating and because central to you know self is central to human existence our major focus has to you know 
be there on evaluating the self. Yes. So this is one basis. The other basis of differentiation is this physical facility. So depending upon how much of wealth the other person has or what is the post that he's holding, we respect or disrespect him. Right. But this ultimately is the differentiation, right? So if somebody has wealth, then you look at you look up at him. When he has he doesn't have much wealth, then we look down upon him. So we are evaluating the person on the basis of the wealth and therefore differentiating. In fact, all this differentiation that you see in the society and you know which keep creating problems, you would see that most of them have to do with this feeling of respect. And most of them has, have to do with this differentiation. So on the basis of wealth and post, we respect other or disrespect other. This <clears throat> gross misunderstanding is because you assume that physical facility will lead to happiness or physical facility is equal to happiness. But the reality is that happiness is being in a state of happen in a state of harmony so happiness is not directly related to the wealth it is directly related to the state of harmony in the self yes the third possibility is this you know, depending upon your preconditionings your beliefs depending upon one set of information that you have accumulated you try to differentiate so different isms, you know, communism and capitalism and all this. So there is so much of differentiation. So if somebody belongs to my ism, I respect him. Somebody belongs to a different ism, I may not respect him or I may even disrespect him. Then there are different sects. Right? And we also have certain different set of information right, given to us from the education, from the society. And on the basis of that also we differentiate. So for example, an engineer would differentiate with a doctor because he has one set of information and this doctor has another set of information. So depending upon these beliefs or preconditionings, we differentiate. So here, if you look at this, the gross misunderstanding is that if the preconditioning of the other matches with my preconditioning, then the other is, you know, like me. And I keep searching for such people. While the reality is that every human being is, you know, like me. So at the level of purpose, program and potential, they are all like me. So now if you look at all this together, what we are doing in the name of respect is differentiation, which is based on body, physical facility or our beliefs, our preconditionings. And we can see that all of them ultimately lead to differentiation, right? not acceptance as the others, you know, being similar. And because this is a differentiation, it leads to disrespect. Right. And this disrespect is not naturally acceptable to us. And therefore it leads to opposition. It leads to movement. Right? And so many things. So many problems in the society is caused because of this disrespect. Because of this differentiation. And this differentiation is done in the name of respect. So we have got into a very complicated situation. In the name of respect, we are doing differentiation. This differentiation leads to disrespect. Disrespect is not naturally acceptable. So there is opposition for it. And there are movements against it. So most of the movement that you see around today, 
you know, in this society, whether east or west, you will find that these are against this kind of discrimination, this kind of differentiation. Description, description, discrimination between male and female. So we have feminist movement. Differentiation on the basis of age. So we have you know, this movement of generation gap. Differentiation on the basis of race, white and black and so on. So all kind of movements are going on against each of these differentiation, which is done in the name of respect. So there is a fight going on because of this disrespect, right? Between male and female, there is a fight going on, black and white, the fight going on, right? So many movements taking place. Physical strength, the one who has more physical strength is trying to dominate the other. Similarly, you know, wealthy people and poor people, that is a dissatisfaction, there is some opposition, some movement like that you can see. So capitalism is trying to put down the you know, communism and vice versa. One sect is trying to differentiate with the other sect. So all this kind of thing is happening in the name of respect. And ultimately they all lead to disrespect because differentiation is not something which is naturally acceptable. So majority of this movement is because of lack of right evaluation, lack of respect. So this we can see. In the main session, we give quite a few examples, you know, to clarify this, but I'm not taking those details here, presuming that you must have gone through the workshop or you know you must have understood this. But if there is any question regarding that, we will anyway take up. So uh, what uh, we are doing today, as I said, that we are trying to develop this preconditioning in the child that I'm special, I'm unique, and I'm different from the other. Right. This feeling that I'm special is by way of this over evaluation. And it certainly leads to ego. And once there is this ego, we are in trouble. We keep fluctuating between ego and depression. On the other hand, when we are able to see that the other is similar to me, that acceptance that the other is similar to me is what we are saying is the minimum content of respect. So if we are able to respect human being, then only we will be in harmony in terms of our behavior with other human being, right? with this feeling of respect. So I can see that I am you know, similar to the other. At the level of purpose, program and potential, we are similar. <laughs> As we go on, we'll see that, you know, we are similar at the level of purpose, program and potential. Right. <clears throat> but this is the minimum content of respect. What is more, we will see next time. The next uh, issue is essentially that to see that is this the complete uh, content of respect or the minimum content of respect. So what we are saying is that this is the minimum content of respect to accept the other as similar to me. If that is the minimum content, what more? That we will see. So if you look at this respect, right evaluation of human being on the basis of self, I can see that the other is similar to me at the level of purpose, program and potential. However, 
when I look at the level of competence that we have been talking about just now, when we're talking about the feeling of trust. So when we look at the competence, we can see that I may have more competence than the other or less competence than the other. But given this fact that I have accepted the other human being as similar to me at the level of purpose, program and potential, then this difference in our competence, we will try to use it for complementarity or for dominating, differentiating. That is the main issue. What will I do? Given that I have better competence than the other, or the other has better competence than me, right? what do I do? So one possibility is that I differentiate, and that is what we are doing today. We are trying to prove that I am a special. Right? And when you think that you are special, then you try to prove by you know, all means that you are better than the other. And there you bring in all these issues, you know, this issue of body and the uh, physical facility and the beliefs, right, of preconditionings. So you have to ask yourself, what will you do? Or there is, you know, the level of purpose, program and potential, we are similar. So that acceptance is at the base. With that acceptance, when we evaluate the competence and we find that the competence are different, what do we do? We use it for complementarity or we use it for differentiation, discrimination. Today, most of the time, we are using it for differentiation, for discrimination, right? Which ultimately boils down to disrespect and which is not naturally acceptable. So we can see that what will be naturally acceptable to us is to, you know, ensure this complementarity when it comes to competence. And if I work out this complementarity with the other, then you can see this. We are saying if the other has more understanding, is more responsible than me, then I am committed to understand from the other. This is important, that if the other person has a more competence, better competence than me, I will try to learn from the other. And this competence means he has the right understanding and right feeling, right, you know, kind of uh, behavior. On the other hand, if I have more understanding, better understanding, and I'm responsible than the other, then first thing I do is that I live with the other person with responsibility, right? Unconditionally, unperturbed by the behavior of the other. So this is very important. You know, and this we have been talking about that if we have this responsibility, the feeling born out of right understanding, then we will continue to have that feeling and behave with other person with that feeling in regard of what is his behavior. So I will respond and not react. So I live with responsibility with the other person. And this is unconditional, uninterrupted by the behavior of the other. And second part is that not only I behave properly with him and I stop there, mm -hmm. right? not only that, but I'm committed to facilitate understanding in the other. So I'm willing to help the other to understand things himself or herself, right, through this process of self-exploration. But this I can do only when the other is assured in relationship and not before that. Not before that, because if he's not assured of me, my behavior, then he would not be even able to listen. So, if I find that his competence is better than me, then I will 
certainly be willing to listen, learn from the other, understand from the other. If my competence is better than the other, then I will help him. I will live with responsibility with him and I will be willing to facilitate this understanding of the other. But that can happen only when there is an assurance in relationship and there is you know, this willingness from the other side to learn. Then I can be of help. But as far as my commitment is concerned, yes, it is there. It is there all the time. So with this, we can see that the total content of respect would be seeing that the other is similar to me at the level of purpose, program and potential. And at the level of competence, we may be different, but we are complementary. And this is the meaning of complementarity that we have explained just now. So in essence, what we are saying is that respect means right evaluation. And of course, at the background of this, we have this feeling of trust on intention. So right evaluation is what is respect. On the other hand, under evaluation, over evaluation or otherwise evaluation is disrespect. And differentiation in any form is disrespect. So this is one thing we are saying. Then we are saying that if we evaluate the other person on the basis of self, then the other is similar to me in terms of purpose, program and potential. And we are complementary to each other, right, at the level of competence. And if you look at this competence, it has to do with this, our level of understanding, right? That is how much of our desire, thought and expectations are on the basis of our natural acceptance. So this competence has to do with this, how much of our desire, thought and expectation, our imagination is in line with our natural acceptance. And we can see that if there is difference in competence at the level of purpose, program and potential, we are similar at the level of competence, we may be different, but this difference is for defining the complementarity and not for differentiation. And when we define the complementarity, this is how it looks that we have already discussed, that if the other has more understanding, then I'm willing to understand from the other. If I have better understanding and I'm more responsible, then number one, I behave properly with the other unconditionally, uninterrupted by his response or reaction. And second, I am committed to facilitate this right understanding in him. If the other person feels assured of me, if he feels assured, then only this process will be successful. Otherwise, it will not be successful. So this is in a sense what we have to uh, you know, place for this feeling of respect. And with this, certainly there are certain points of self-reflection that we can see. This, all these points we have discussed today you know, are the points for self-reflection. So each one of them you can you know, keep reflecting on. Okay, so we'll stop here. We'll see you all in the morning tomorrow, 5.15 a.m. Thank you very much.